Tu Xiaoning discovered that Ji Yuhang had placed his white moonlight on the bookshelf in the study. Without hesitation, she put it into the drawer. Inside, she unexpectedly found a pink eraser and was surprised. She had a similar eraser in high school. Thinking that this might have also been a gift from his white moonlight goddess, a wave of jealousy surged in her heart. In the evening, Tu Xiaoning heard Ji Yuhang softly groaning, complaining about the soreness in his arm. Gently, she began to massage him and asked, Can you accompany me to meet my client tomorrow? Ji Yuhang replied, That doesn't seem very appropriate. She said, If you come with me, I'll feel more confident. Please, go with me. Seeing her pleading cutely, Ji Yuhang's heart warmed, and he agreed, saying, All right. The next day, Tu Xiaoning and Ji Yuhang arrived at the glass manufacturing plant. The chairman mentioned that they didn't need a bank loan at all, but since he and President Ji were from the same hometown, they could meet and chat. Tu Xiaoning was not discouraged. Instead, she maintained a professional attitude and offered to answer any questions they had related to banking. The chairman said, that's great, I actually do have a question. While we don't need a loan, we are interested in banking wealth management services. Tu Xiaoning mentioned that she was very skilled in financial management projects. During the conversation, she proposed an innovative cooperation plan, by linking the bank with the glass factory's transactions with its clients, they could provide investment and financial management services for the company's retained funds. Ji Yuhang added that as long as the company's retained funds exceeded 5 million, they would offer an interest rate higher than regular savings for their settlement. This proposal immediately won the chairman's approval. On the way back, Ji Yuhang couldn't stop praising Tu Xiaoning, saying that her perseverance in the face of the client's refusal to take a loan had truly impressed him. She smiled and said, I learned it from you. Rao Jing felt a bit disappointed in the office after sensing Zhao Fangang's coldness toward her. At that moment, Tu Xiaoning walked in, carrying Ji Yuhang's bag. Zhao Fangang asked, did you go with President Ji to discuss business? She replied, No, I just ran into him in the elevator. He was on his way to see the bank president and asked me to bring his bag back to his office. Rao Jing approached Tu Xiaoning, ostensibly to inquire about her work progress, but in reality, to subtly remind her to be mentally prepared for the possibility of being fired if her relationship with Ji Yuhang became public. Tu Xiaoning, full of confidence, said, don't worry, Sister Jing, I won't be fired. She then revealed the wager agreement she had with Ji Yuhang, and her fearless, forward-looking attitude deeply moved Rao Jing. Ji Yuhang arrived at the bank president's office, and the president asked with concern, how are things adjusting? Ji Yuhang replied, almost there. The president continued, so, what are your new plans? After all, you agreed to come here because of your mother. Ji Yuhang reassured him, Don't worry, sir. I promised you that I would revive the expansion department, and I will make sure of it. I'd also like to request an opportunity for promotion for the colleagues in the expansion department. At the meeting, Ji Yuhang assigned the government's deposit project bid to Rao Jing and Zhao Fangang, noting their excellent teamwork and seamless collaboration in the past. Tang Yuhui, however, suggested that Ji Yuhang hand the project to her stating that she had connections to secure the bid. Ji Yuhang replied, I trust manager Rao and manager Zhao to win the bid through their abilities, so they will continue leading this project. Tu Xiaoning also volunteered to assist Rao Jing in organizing the project materials. The entire expansion department was busy preparing anxiously for the upcoming bid results. The colleagues from the expansion department waited anxiously outside, their hearts filled with unease. When they saw Ji Yuhang and Rao Jing walk out of the meeting room with expressionless faces, they assumed the project bid had failed. However, Ji Yuhang brought a delightful surprise, announcing that the bid was successful and that the 800 million deposit would soon be credited to the account. Everyone erupted in excited cheers, and at the same time, Tu Xiaoning received great news that she had passed the interview for the project manager position. Tu Xiaoning's outstanding performance during the interview earned her widespread recognition, and team members enthusiastically congratulated her with applause. Rao Jing, being thoughtful, reminded her to notify her family and share the joy.
Tu Xiaoning quickly sent a group message to her family to share the good news. Tang Yahui's family had secured a position for her as a financial manager at another bank. Faced with this enticing opportunity, she chose to forego it, deciding instead to remain where she was for Ji Yuhang's sake. The success of the government project not only brought news of promotions and salary increases for the expansion department but also ensured that the team remained at the top of the performance charts for two consecutive quarters. To commemorate this moment, the entire department took a group photo. Rao Jing cleverly arranged for Tu Xiaoning and Ji Yuheng to stand side by side, and the two shared a warm smile as they looked at each other. Chi Yu officially became a police officer, bringing a fresh wave of energy to the team. Ling Wei celebrated this milestone by presenting him with flowers and a pair of luxurious handmade alligator skin shoes as a gift. Zhao Fanggang and Rao Jing became increasingly distant, often arguing and sulking, which left Rao Jing feeling a tinge of sadness. She could only share her promotion news with the waiter at the bar. The waiter remarked, Sister, you used to come here with different handsome guys. Why are you here alone now? Rao Jing couldn't help but search through her contacts, but Zhao Fanggang's face kept appearing in her mind. Tu Xiaoning was officially promoted to a client manager, and her parents were delighted, though they had a few criticisms about her ID photo. Ji Yuhang gently comforted her and they took a leisurely stroll home after dinner. Along the way, Tu Xiaoning curiously asked about Ji Yuhang's future plans. He revealed his intention to compete for the position of bank president. Despite knowing the challenges ahead, Tu Xiaoning fully supported him, and in her heart, she harbored a private wish if they were in different departments, they could openly pursue their relationship. Ji Yuhang had a clear goal in mind. The bank president informed him about a major tourism project, Star City Resort, that would be developed on the outskirts of the city. The developer had just purchased the land, and Ji Yuhang anticipated that the developer would seek a loan from local banks. The president added that Dai Rui would be opening a branch there. How about it? Are you interested in this branch? The president asked. Ji Yuhang replied, As long as you trust me, I will not let you down. Ji Yuhang said to her, Xiaoning, if I succeed in the competition for the president position, let's get married. She replied, who proposes like that, making promises for the future? Let's talk about it after you've succeeded in the competition. At the new product launch at the glass factory, Tu Xiaoning had meticulously prepared gifts, earning high praise from the clients. Ji Yuhang and Zhao Fanggang visited the tourism developer, general manager Xia but were unable to meet him. However, he unexpectedly discovered that General Manager Xia frequented a private squash court in the northern part of the city. The squash court was membership-based, and the owner's surname was Su. Zhao Fanggang asked, How do you know about a client I had a year and a half ago, considering you've only been here for six months? Ji Yuhang smiled only.